Hey everyone, it's Kara here from Boho Berry and I am back with the third video in my fountain pen series. Now in this video, I wanna talk about maintenance, cleaning and refilling your fountain pens. So the first thing I wanna talk about when it comes to maintenance is making sure that you're looking up the manufacturer's recommendations for each pen that you own. Uh, what I'm going to be showing you today are just some general ways that you can clean and maintain your pens, but sometimes it will vary depending on the style of pen, its filling mechanism, etc. So I actually have three pens in my inked up case um, that are empty and need to be cleaned and refilled. So. I've been writing with these three pens a lot lately, so they definitely need to be re-inked. And I like to, whenever I'm re-inking my pen, I like to go ahead and just flush it out with water if I'm putting the same ink back into it. If I'm changing inks entirely, I'll clean the pen a little bit more thoroughly. So I'm gonna be taking you through how I clean and re-ink these three pens today. Uh, before I take you into my bathroom, I know very glamorous, uh, before, <laughs> before we head in there, I wanna show you some of the supplies that we're gonna be using. So when I am cleaning and re-inking, or let's just say cleaning for now, I like to do it in my bathroom so I have some running water. And then I also like to use a couple of red solo cups or any plastic cup will do to hold dirty water and clean water. And you'll see why that's important here in a minute. Uh, I also like to use a bulb syringe. It's a trick that I picked up from Brian Goulet and you'll see what I'm talking about here in a little bit as well. But it's really handy for sucking up water and flushing clean water through your pen to get the ink out a little bit quicker than you may otherwise. The third item that I like to use is an ink syringe. Now these I got from Goulet. Actually, I got all three of these from Goulet pens. It's sold as a pen cleaning, or yes, pen cleaning kit on the Goulet website. But this is just a little blunt needle syringe that's used for re-inking fountain pens. So if you have a tricky pen or you're trying to fill from an ink sample or something like that, an ink syringe might come in really, really handy. Definitely not a must have, but a nice to have. All right, and then the last item that I wanna show you is this pen flush. I got this again from Goulet Pens, uh, but this is really handy when you have inks that are a little stubborn Sometimes there's some inks that are a little stubborn. They may want to stain the barrel of the pen and you really just want to get a really good deep clean on your pen. That's when I use the pen flush. All right, so all that being said, I'm going to take you into my bathroom and we'll get started. See you there. All right, so here we are at my bathroom sink. I know this is very, <laughs> very exciting, uh, but this is where I clean all of my fountain pens. So the first thing I do is I get my cups ready. So I wanna have one cup full of clean water. I'm gonna make that this one. And you don't want hot water. All right, so I've got a cup full of clean water. It's about room temperature. And a lot of manufacturers do recommend that you use distilled water, but I just, I've used tap water. Our tap water here is pretty good, so I'm not too worried about it. Uh, my second cup is going to be for my dirty water. So I'm gonna leave that empty. And I do this right in the sink so that if I spill or make a mess, it's always in the sink and I can wipe it up pretty easily. Uh, the other things that I have on hand are my pen flush in case I need it, and of course my bulb syringe. I also have a dry paper towel. I've used it a few times when inking pens, but it's still got some clean spots and I'll show you what I use that for. In addition, I also have a plain white towel on the side where I'm gonna set my pens to dry when they are done. All right, so let's start with my Lamy All-Star here. So the first thing I like to do is check inside the cap, and I don't know if the camera will 
pick that up at all, but I always like to just double check that there's no ink or anything in there. If there is, I'll usually dip a Q-tip in water and kind of get in there and clean it out that way. And then we're just gonna take apart the pen. So I'm gonna pull the body off of the pen, set that aside. And you can see in here that there's still a little bit of ink in this pen, not a whole lot. I don't know if you can see that at the top there, but what I'm gonna do is expel by turning this little knob on the converter. I'm gonna expel whatever ink is in there into my dirty, my dirty cup. So there wasn't much, I think I got like one or two drops out. All right, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick it into the clean water and draw up clean water into the pen. And then I'm gonna expel it by twisting the other way into my dirty cup. And you would wanna do this over and over and over again until your water runs clear. But I'm gonna show you another trick that I really, really like that I learned from Brian. So I'm actually gonna take this converter all the way out of the pen, like so. I'm gonna set this to the side for just a second. And to get the converter completely clean, which it pretty much is, I'm gonna go back, and hopefully you can see this, I'm gonna go back and refill and expel that ink. I know my arm's probably in the way, but I'm just filling it up with clean water. Sorry if you can hear my dog in the background. <laughs> and then expelling into the other cup. All right, and sometimes I like to only fill it part way with water, grab it and give it a good little shake. That'll get some of that extra ink that gets stuck around the top out of there. I'm gonna do it one more time. Spill that again. And we're gonna call that done because I'm actually gonna be filling this pen up with the exact same color. So I'm not too super worried about making sure that it's completely clear. All right, so I'm gonna set this to the side to dry. And I don't know if you can see, but my clean water is a little blue, mostly from dipping the pen in there that first time. So I'm actually gonna empty that out. and I've refilled with completely clean water again. All right, so the bulb syringe trick, in order to clean out the feed and the nib, I'm just gonna suck up water with the syringe and then holding it over the dirty cup. I'm gonna put that in as tightly as I can and I'm just gonna squeeze. And hopefully you can see there that I'm just flushing clean water through and the water is getting clearer and clearer as it comes out as it's diluting the ink and cleaning out the feed. All right so I'm going to do that again. Get more clean water. Oh, not tight in there. There we go. And you may notice that the bulb syringe doesn't necessarily fit quite right in all types of different pens. So this only works with a few styles, most of the major ones. All right. Now, what I like to do at this point, it's relatively clear, but I like to rub the backside or the top of the nib on a paper towel and you'll see that that kind of wicks some of that remaining ink water mixture from inside the pen all right so we're going to flush a little bit more And again, I'm not trying to get this one 
super, super clean because I'm putting the same ink back in it. I just want to flush it out before I re-ink it, mainly because I hadn't used it in about a week and I was worried there might be some dried up ink in there. So I want to make sure that that's not the case. All right. So one more time, I'm just going to run this across my paper towel. You can also kind of fold the paper towel over and just hold it and that will kind of wick everything out of the feed as well. All right, and now I'm gonna set this aside to dry on my towel, which hopefully you can see those. I'll set them up here, that's probably more. All right, so that was pen number one, and I'm gonna clean up after myself a little bit, get rid of this inky water. start this process over again with the next pen. So I've got a cup of clean water and empty cup. So with this one, I am going to clean out my Edison Nouveau Premier. This is the Sea Glass Spring Edition from 2017. So I'm going to open her up same way I did with the Lamy. And you'll see this one's completely empty. And I'm just gonna go ahead and go straight into flushing the pen directly. So I'm gonna clean out the converter first. Same way I did before. Just gonna suck up water. I'm gonna give it a little shake. Get some of that dried up ink loosened up a little bit. And dump that into my dirty. All right, you can see that's coming com almost completely clear already. Do the same. And with this one, I actually am going to change the color of ink that I have inside. So I'm going to try to get this one really, really clean so everything's running perfectly clear. Right now it's almost there. Almost. All right, I think that looks pretty good. All right, now let's clean out this part. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna run clean water through. Well, it starts to run, it's starting to run pretty clear now. Still a little hint of like purpley lavender in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take some more water into my third cup here. I'm not gonna fill it up too far, but I am gonna add a little bit of Goulet pen flush to this one. A couple of little squirts, a little swirl. I'm gonna swap my clean water over here and this is my water with pen flush. So I'm gonna suck up some of that and do the exact same thing. Now it's starting to run like super clear, which is great, that's exactly what I want. All right, so now let's test this out on the paper towel, let's see how we did. We definitely still got a little bit of ink in there, not too much, definitely not as much as the Lamy had. All right, so let's give that another flush. And as I said before, like some inks are definitely a lot more stubborn than others. This particular ink is 
pilot of Roshizuku Ajisai. I hope I'm saying that right. It means hydrangea, if I'm not mistaken. Somebody correct me if I am, I'm sure. But I've actually never cleaned this out of a pen before. So I wasn't sure quite how stubborn it would be. And this pen sat dry for probably over a week. All right, let's see how we're doing now. And one thing I like to do with my pens, I often like to match the, the color of my pen to the color of my ink. And at the very least, once I ink up a pen, I like to kind of keep that same color family in there. So this Ajisai is like a lavender, like really light purple slash light blue kind of color. So I'll probably put another cool color in this pen, like a blue or a purple. Maybe even a green, but probably blue or purple since those are the main colors of the pen itself. So I'm just running some pen flush to do this one more time. Seems to be a pretty stubborn, stubborn ink in there. Okay. Another option that I've seen recommended is to soak your nib, like if the ink is really dried up, uh, soak your nib in a mix of like water and pen flesh overnight to kind of start loosening that up. Let's see, we're running almost completely clear here, which is exactly what we want. All right, so now I'm gonna put my flush mixture back over here, come back to clean water, and I'm gonna run clean water through it one more time. Just to get the flush completely out of there, make sure that it's nice and clean and ready to go. All right, let's see how we did. Yes. I'll have to grab a new paper towel soon. There we go. Still got a little bit of ink coming out. But since I'm gonna put another purple ink in here, I'm not gonna worry about it too much. We're just gonna let it go. All right, then we're gonna let that dry. All right, so I am back and for demonstration purposes, oh, I did wanna say, I did not end up doing the vanishing point on camera. I realized how long <laughs> it was taking to do the other two. And I thought with two examples, that would be enough for you. So maybe one of these days I'll do like an Instagram live or a Facebook live or something. I do have this and actually a couple other pens that I wanna clean as well. So maybe I'll just hop on uh, with you guys live one of these days if you wanna watch me do those as well. All right, so I'm gonna set my vanishing point aside and now I'm gonna show you how I fill my inks. So for demonstration purposes, I didn't wanna take the time to really let these dry. So there might be a little bit of water uh, in the feed here still. In fact, I can see a couple of drops. So when I ink this and get to writing, there's a good chance that my ink may be watered down a little bit for, for the first little bit that I write, but I'm not too, too worried about that. All right, so with the Lamy, I am gonna show you the typical way that you would ink it up. So I'm actually gonna ink it up with this Lamy Pacific, which is actually just Lamy turquoise. And I'm gonna open my bottle and I'm gonna have my paper towel handy again. And I'm gonna dip my pen into the bottle just enough so that, hopefully you'll be able to see this, this little hole right here is the feed hole or fill hole. <laughs> uh, I believe it's called a fill hole technically, but you wanna make sure that that part is submerged in the ink and all pens have a different placement for their fill holes, but it's easily recognizable. All right, so I'm gonna dip my pen into the ink until that is covered. 
and I am simply going to twist the converter slowly as it draws up the ink. I'm going to wipe off the excess there on the outside. And technically, that is filled up. All right, so that's one down. And that was pretty easy, but sometimes there are times when maybe your bottle is almost empty and you can't get that feed hole submerged, or you're inking from something like an ink sample or something like that. So with my other pen, I'm gonna show you how I would fill up using the ink syringe. So we're gonna pretend this bottle is pretty full. It's Pilot Eroshizuku Yamabudo, which is a really pretty kind of hot pink fuchsia ink. But we're gonna pretend that there's not enough ink in here and I'm not gonna be able to get that feed hole. You can see it hopefully right down there. Let's say that I'm not able to get that submerged in the ink. So what I'm gonna do instead is take the converter out and I'm going to twist it so that it's all the way open and empty. Let's see if I can get this bottle open. There we go. Oh boy. All right, this is where it gets messy, y'all. There we go. Okay, haven't opened that ink in a while. And this is why you get inky fingers when you're cleaning and inking fountain pens. I was doing pretty good so far. All right, so I'm gonna take my syringe and I'm gonna fill it up with ink. You don't need to fill it up all the way. Most pens don't hold more than a couple of milliliters. All right, there we go. Now I'm just gonna put it right into the converter and squeeze to fill it up. There we go. One thing I really like about this method is you can get a really, really full converter with this method. All right, so I'm gonna put this back on my pen And there she is, she is filled up. Uh, the one downfall of this filling method, the one thing I don't particularly like about it, and I'm gonna have to rinse this out in the bathroom to get that clean again. But the one thing I don't like about this method is since you are not dipping the actual nib and feed into the ink, your feed is not saturated with ink. So with this one, since we dipped the entire nib and feed into the ink, it's already saturated and basically ready to write. So I'm gonna grab my ink journal here. And let's see, got a currently inked. I haven't used this in a long time. All right, so you'll see that this starts writing right away. So let's see, 12. 12, oh my gosh, I'm still in December. Let's just start that over. 01, 25, 18, and Lonnie, All Star. Pacific, and the ink is Lonnie Turquoise. All right, and you will notice that there was a little bit of water in that feed still, if you remember. So this ink is coming out a little bit lighter, like more watered down than it will normally. All right, so this one, oh, and there it goes. I talked too long and it already saturated. Uh, through capillary action, even though we did not dip the nib or the feed in the ink, It is ready to write. However, it is still writing 
kind of a purplish color, which was the last ink that I had in it, and very watered down. So I'm just going to take it across my page a bunch of times, not pressing hard or anything, just really lightly. And that is starting to dry up, which is good. It's getting lighter and lighter. And with any luck, in a few minutes, it'll start running pink. However, it looks like it's taking its sweet time. So I'll show you a little trick there too. All right, so I'm gonna open our back up. And depending on the converter you have, this one is not super flexible. Um, so I don't really wanna squeeze it, but I can, and I'm doing this over a paper towel intentionally. I can twist it just a little bit and kind of force that ink to travel through the feed. I'm just doing it very, very slowly. And what I'm looking for is like a bubble of ink and I'm starting to see it coming up right there at the bottom. All right, and that's starting to saturate our feed. Oh, there it is. It's changing over to that hot pink we were looking for. All right, so let's put our cap back on. We are in business. Ah, making a mess. We are in business. All right, 01, 25, 18. Oh, my handwriting is a mess today. How do you spell Nouveau? I always mess it up. N-O-U. Right, this is the sea glass. And it is Iroshizuku. Yama. Budo. All right. There we go. All right, y'all. So that is it. This ended up being a way longer video than I planned. But for those of you that stuck with me, I appreciate it. If you have any questions, as always, drop them down below. I do want to say a huge, huge thank you to Brian Goulet over at GouletPens.com. Uh, his YouTube channel, and I'm going to drop some great links down below in the description for you. His YouTube channel and Brian himself has taught me everything <laughs> that I know about fountain pens. And his YouTube channel is just a wealth, a wealth of information on fountain pens. So I probably skipped over some things that were maybe important. Uh, <laughs> I just wanted to show you my process for cleaning and re-inking my pens. I do wanna note here that I usually only keep about 10 pens inked up at any given time. Since these are inked up, I'm gonna put them right back in my case. The rest of my pens I do store completely clean and dry in that 36 pen case that I showed you last week. Uh, next week, we're actually gonna be talking about inks. So if you have any ink questions, definitely let me know. I'm gonna be talking about stored, storing your inks, filling from different types of things like bottles or samples, uh, what some of my favorite inks are, and all those other good things, like what kind of inks work best in a fine nib, medium nib, all that stuff we're gonna be covering next week. So I really, really look forward to it. Thanks again for sticking with me through this video, and I will see you all soon. Bye. Thank you.